Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. Wow, it is super exciting. Everything seems to be soaring in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin has been kissing 15,000 back and forth over the past couple of hours. Yeah, this is, in fact, uh, very hard to find any red in the top 50 by market cap. Only those stable coins that are tied to the US dollar have been in the red. You probably feel like over the past few months, this is a time where you really want to pinch yourself. Is this really happening? And if it's not your first time, well, these bull runs can last for only hours and they can last for days and they can sometimes last for weeks. Nobody knows. So please carefully watch. And if you know where your home plate is, then it's time to focus because we have a very strong trajectory. I want to share with you a very interesting conversation with Frank Shaparo and Rao Paul. This is part of really focusing on crypto being the next big trend in financial planning. And we are seeing an intersection of crypto and the macro world. He was asked, uh, from uh, Frank Shaparo, Raul was, what is the big narrative to come? Because they are trying to always see the future before it's here. And this is a fantastically complicated space. And as Raul says, everything needs to work together. Have a listen. In the crypto narrative, there's some interesting things that we see building, like um, uh, that kind of interoperability of platforms. How are you going to build the layer that allows everything to connect? So again, you know, the macro guys are trying to think, we live in the future. Our job is to see where the future state is and then try and make bets accordingly. So when we're looking at that, we're saying, okay, we can see Ethereum, Bitcoin, private tokens, different ledgers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, where's that all going? It's not just a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin's going up world. It's a, okay, this is a fantastically complicated new system that all needs to work together. He is so absolutely correct. And that has been the vision of Ripple from the get-go. Um, I know that uh, if you watch this unlisted video, from 2016, you're going to see Chris Larson here talking about how goods, data, and money all have to be connected in order to have effective globalization. And that means interoperability. Have a listen, listen just to about 45 seconds here. Uh, you know, obviously globalization has gotten a bad rap uh, lately, rightly so. Um, but not because it's a bad thing, but rather it's an incomplete thing. There is something missing. And the way we like to think about it is, you know, just like you cannot have fire without fuel, oxygen, and heat, you really can't have effective globalization without interoperability in goods, data, and, and money. They all have to work together. And unfortunately, we only have interoperability in goods and data. We have networks of networks. And those two things, we don't have a network of network when it comes to money. So globalization is sort of like a fire without fuel. It's sort of smoldering, but it's not this sort of bonfire of growth that we need. Uh, you know, and you think. Really, what a visionary. And think about when you couple that with XRP being a neutral digital asset to help transport that value. This is why I think this particular project is so interesting. And then you take the fact that probably a brand new SEC chairperson is going to likely come soon. Uh, this could very well keep Ripple in the United States. If the regulators finally take some action that could put the U.S. in a leading position with crypto, uh, this becomes an incredibly powerful project. Okay, uh, I got an email from the co-founder of Zinfin, Mr. Atul Kikid, and he said to me that he is working on some details. 
And I know he needs to totally work out his timing. So I understand what he needs to do, but I just wanted to let you know to look forward to that interview. It's coming soon. And Brian Armstrong, he tweeted out just in the last 24 hours that he's looking to fill some new positions in Tokyo. Seven different areas of expertise, nine positions total. I think the competition from this company in Japan is going to really be a positive for cryptocurrency here. And then about a month ago, SBI VC Trade launched a new channel on YouTube, and it is really becoming aggressive, uh, not only in the acquisition that it made with the largest XRP market maker, and then they integrated in September, but they're ramping up their public exposure. Uh, they are doing so not only on SBI VC Trade, but also on SBI um, Securities. The spokesperson for those two platforms is Reina Sumi. I think she's really doing a good job. This is uh, one of those very short six second spots. For some reason, Japan is really fast when it gives a message. Like on television, for example, we never see a 30 second commercial. Everything is 15 seconds or less. And here is an example of just six seconds where they get a message out. Not sure why, but that's just the way it is here. And when we talk about SBI, well, there was a new announcement today. This is Apex Legend. And they are, this is a game that's a free play battle royale. It's a first person shooter game. They're going to have some 60 people making up 20 teams that play against each other. And there are four new players on the esports team by SBI. This is Haru, which is, uh, means spring in Japanese, Lelia, Pinky, and Wasuo. They're all active players. They have their own YouTube channels. They have their Twitter feeds. Uh, I think you can find them if you want to follow them. Spring is going to lead that team in the commander tower as he said in his comments, I think I'm going to be his biggest fan. That game was released in 2019. It has won lots of awards. It won the best first-person shooter award from PC Gamer. It also got the best multiplayer game of 2019, among others. And you won't believe this. Look at this. This video premiered on October 28th, okay? Just on the 28th of October, it already has 5,500,000 some thousand views. That is incredible. And did you know David Schwartz? This is a picture he tweeted out in the last uh, 24 hours. 14 years ago, he and his wife owned a video game store called Geeks Paradise in California. <laughs> I didn't know that. I think that is just great. That is something that's fun to know. And I'm going to encourage everybody who is interested in additional research that I do to uh, join me on Patreon because I sent out something today that I thought was very interesting. And that is uh, R3 has a brand new um, SDK, a software developers kit that's going to integrate into Corda in 2021. And it's very, very interesting because it's all about uh, being able to send your secure secret data in a trustful manner. Because we see now that dozens of banks in Italy are in sync with their same data. But this project really takes Corda to a whole new level. The bond market, for example, was used as uh, a way to describe how their product will help. There are There is what's called a dark pool when you trade bonds. And that person who is operating the platform of the dark pool, they know what the buyers are are buying at and they know what the sellers want. Uh, so you have to 
basically trust that that operator of the dark pool isn't going to use that information to his personal advantage. Uh, that operator sees everything. So this new product from R3 is something that will be able to ensure that the information is securely shared and the person who is at the platform uh, doesn't use it in the wrong way. And it's um, it's a great video. And, and again, if you are um, interested in knowing what impacts this space, especially when it comes to SBI, uh, R3S, uh, the SBI uh, R3 Japan. Yeah, there's been a lot of moves in the last couple of months. And I foresee something is going to take place. It's, uh, that is the kind of process I go through in my thinking and sharing when I uh, give the that information to the patrons. So if that interests you to see additional information that doesn't necessarily hit my videos, well, then that is a good place to, to go. And I did liken those dark pool platforms to the way that they buy and sell Fugu, which is blowfish in Japan. You might find this interesting. There is a gentleman who is operating the auction by this black glove, and the buyers will put their price under the glove secretly through hand signals, through the shape of the hand, will tell the auctioneer what the uh, prices that they're willing to spend. So here you have a dark pool and that operator knows of course what the sellers of the blowfish, what well, the price they want to achieve. And at the same time, he also knows what the buyers are willing to spend. So they are trusting <laughs> that the guy with the glove is going to operate on a fair basis. So this is where Technology today, like that of Enclave, which is the new product from R3, is really so powerful. I don't know. It, it, I don't know if it will ever replace the the person with a glove in Japan, but it does just liken to that same particular situation. And I did do an extended fluff on the capital of Fugu. Fugu is blowfish, and that's. Shimonoseki. It's located in Yamaguchi Prefecture, Japan. And I, uh, I really thought this was a fun extended fluff to do. And I hope you enjoy it as well. I talk about this area, which is really rich in a samurai family that is, uh, has a, has a very long history in this Choshu domain and even once had a castle, which has since unfortunately been destroyed. But there is just some interesting old residences left and gardens. And yeah, I hope that it is something you can enjoy. There's a link in the description below. And uh, last but not least, to leave you a picture of the Hakaba Mountains. This is a tweet of a of a photograph that went out today and the Japanese Alps, as these are called, got their dusting of snow and it's just beautiful with the fall color. All right, everybody. Yes, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.